So you've just had a total hip replacement surgery. These are the best exercises for you to do in the first one to four weeks after your hip surgery. There's two main approaches for a total hip replacement surgery. The direct anterior approach, which comes in from the front side, so you'll have a smaller incision on the front of the hip, and a traditional posterior approach, which actually comes in kind of from the back outer side. Typically it has a longer incision, and when they do the posterior approach, they have to go in and kind of split open one of the, the side hip muscles there to gain access to the hip. If you had a traditional posterior approach where they come from the outside, there's typically some hip precautions post-operatively that you've got to maintain. Number one, no hip flexion beyond 90 degrees, no crossing your legs across midline, and no internal rotation, so no turning your leg inward. The reason you have hip precautions from the posterior approach is to prevent any potential for hip dislocation within those first few weeks after surgery. The direct anterior approach, there's typically no precautions afterwards. Either way, you definitely want to check with your surgeon to see if you have any hip precautions after your total hip surgery. So our first exercise is using a recumbent bike. A recumbent bike, if you don't know, is one of the bikes that you sit on. It's a stationary bike that you sit on in a reclined position and it has back support. We want to use a recumbent bike because you can lean yourself back far enough that when you're pedaling around, you don't break that 90 degrees of hip flexion plane in the case that you had a traditional posterior approach during your surgery. So you use the uh, recumbent bike and you can go for 10 or 15 repetitions for nice, easy hip range of motion. Now say that you were using the recumbent bike that didn't actually have a recline feature on the back support, then all you do is do rocking back and forth on the bike rather than full revolutions so that you can still maintain that 90 degrees or, or not break the 90 degree plane at the hips as you're going around. So you can just do rocking back and forth for that 10 or 15 minutes. Still just as great for the hip. For our next exercise, we're gonna do a supine piriformis stretch. So for this exercise, my left hip has been replaced. So this is the surgical side. I've crossed my ankle uh, to my other thigh here. My left knee is pointing out to the side. And then I'm going to gently press my knee away from me so it's externally rotating the hip. And I'll feel a gentle stretch in my buttock, my left buttock out here. So we're just externally rotating that, that hip there until you feel a gentle stretch. And when you're stretching post-operatively, you definitely want to go on the mild uh, like milder intensity level. So we never want to stretch aggressively when you're, when you're uh, acutely pro, um, post-op. So just be gentle with the stretch, hold it for about 30 seconds. Then after 30 seconds, make sure you come out of it. So it kind of loosens all those muscles up because your hip's going to be stiff. Then come back into the next one, gently press out, externally rotating that hip until you feel that gentle stretch hold for 30 seconds, and we'll do three repetitions of the supine piriformis stretch. Our next exercise is a supine Thomas stretch. So a Thomas stretch focuses on the hip flexors and the quads in the front, and these muscles are gonna be really tight. So we wanna be gentle with this stretch. In order to do the stretch properly, typically you lie on the edge of your bed or the couch, uh, depending on what what's low enough to the ground that you can actually touch the floor. So right now I'm touching the floor with my my left toes, and I'm gonna feel and I'm feeling the stretch on my left side here. So I have my right knee bent, just gently dropping my left leg off the edge of the table here, keeping it in line with my body so that my leg's not all bent out to the side. I'm trying to stay in a nice nice line here. And then I'm just relaxing into it and you can bend your knee slightly further to get more of a stretch here on the thigh uh, or even less if, if it's too intense, you just wanna back off then straighten your knee a little bit more. But we're just gonna lie there for about 30 seconds. And then after 30 seconds, I'll come up into the rest position and then I'll drop it back off, kind of holding for another 30 seconds. And we're just gonna do three repetitions of the Thomas stretch. For our fourth exercise, we're gonna do bridging. For bridging, you're gonna lie on your back, both knees bent equally, arms down to your sides. You'll engage by uh, squeezing the glutes, your buttock muscles, as you raise the hips up towards the ceiling. Now notice at the top though, I'm still maintaining a slight bend in my hips. So I'm pausing there, really focusing on squeezing the glutes, and then I'm gonna lower back down, 
squeeze my glutes and raise back up into a bridge, pausing and back down. And so we're gonna do three sets of 10 repetitions. Our fifth exercise is supine marching. So this time we're gonna engage the hip flexors and the quads and the core on the front side, these anterior chain muscles. So for this exercise, again, lie on your back with both knees bent equally, arms down to your sides. Engage your core, so squeeze your core in the front, those abdominals, and then lift one leg up into a marching position where if you had the posterior approach, remember if that's the outside kind of incision, you'll want to stop at 90 degrees of hip flexion, so you don't want to break that 90 degrees, and then lie back down, marching side to side, keeping the core tight, the back flat against the table, so we're not letting your back arch, protecting the spine, and we're just going to march back and forth, and then you can count these repetitions every time your surgical leg comes up, that's one repetition. So we're doing kind of equal numbers on both sides. And we'll do three sets of 10 for the supine marching exercise. Our next exercise is a straight leg raise. So for this exercise, it's basically an advancement of the supine marching. So if you found the marches too easy, this is a, a great next one to go right into. So you'll have your opposite leg bent, your surgical leg straight, toes pulled up towards you, so you got a nice straight leg there. Toes and knees kind of pointing straight up. Engage your core, and then lift that straight leg up with the goal getting it parallel to the other leg there. If you can't get it that high, that's okay for now. You'll get there eventually. Just a slight pause at the top, and then Let's start off with about two sets of five to eight repetitions because this really does load the hip flexors. So the front, those muscles in the front of the hip, it really loads them heavy. So since it's only been, you know, your post-op one to four weeks, these muscles are, they just don't have the tolerance to a lot of heavy resistance exercise yet. So you want to be gentle easing into these straight leg raises. Um, uh, so just make sure that you're, you're gentle with it. So let's start off with two sets of five to eight repetitions, eventually leading up to two to three sets of 10. As the weeks go on, as your tolerance to this exercise improves, you can do more sets and more repetitions. Our seventh exercise is a supine hip adduction isometric exercise. So it's basically gonna be squeezing our legs together to engage your groin muscles, which are in the inner thigh areas. So. I'm gonna use a throw pillow, which is kind of uh, soft, but yet kind of firm, right? So you can also use uh, like a squishy children's ball, um, almost like a dodge ball, those work really well. So we use those in the clinic. But for here, and these purposes, I would use a pillow or a, uh, if you take a bath towel and roll it up, that works really well too. You'll place it between your knees with both legs bent equally. Engage your core like always and then squeeze your knees together. So squeezing the pillow in between your legs, holding for 10 seconds, engaging those groin muscles, and then relax. Squeeze for 10 seconds, and then relax. And so you'll, you'll hold for 10 seconds, you'll do 10 repetitions, and then let's do two sets. So you'll end up doing 20 of those. For a final exercise, we're gonna do a sit to stand from a chair. Now this is a really good functional exercise. It's very important. Obviously getting up and out of a chair is really important. Uh, in the beginning, it's gonna to be tough because post-operatively the muscles in the hips uh, are weak. Their tolerance is very low. So we need to really work on this. And if you need to say, say your dining room chair is just too deep for you to get out of, you can take a pillow and place it underneath your butt, which will raise the height of the chair up, it'll make it easier for you to get out of. So you can go ahead and use that in the beginning um, as a form of assistance. Also, you could do it in front of a table, like your dining room table, so that you could grab hold of if you need a little bit of arm support, or you could use a chair with armrests. Totally up to you. You figure out, like, you can modify it as needed. But for me here, I've got uh, the pillow underneath me. Both feet are pulled underneath me as well, so they're nice and flat on the floor. And then I can cross my arms, lean forward until you feel the weight on your feet, drive through both feet, and come to a stand. And then you're gonna do your best to slowly sit back down into the chair. So again, lean forward to your, your weight on your feet, drive through your feet, come up to a full stand, and then controlled sit back down. 
and we'll try for 10 repetitions of those and then take a good minute rest and maybe another set of 10. So you can work on building up to two sets of 10. And then as you get stronger and this gets better, you take away your arm support or you take away the pillow support underneath you so that you're coming from a greater depth. You're actually coming up out of the chair. So you have a greater range of motion there with the sit to stand exercise. Please give this video a like to help support my channel and drop any questions in the comments below. You'll definitely wanna go check out my other hip strengthening videos as you continue on your pathway to living a healthy and active lifestyle.